Hello everyone, Jess here, and we're delighted to say that this video is sponsored by Surfshark, but more on that later. There's plenty to be said about giving moviegoers something unexpected when a picture finally sees the light of day and makes its way out to the masses. Subverting expectations or completely pulling the rug out from an audience has been a tool utilized to make certain movies utterly iconic over the decades. On the flip side of this though, there always has to be a sense of care when it pertains to how one handles such things. That's where the spotlight is shone in this list, as some films have ended up delivering something completely different to what we expected and not in a good way. I'm Jess from What Culture, and here are 10 horror movies that turned out nothing like you were promised. Number 10. Alien Covenant Originally, film fans were informed how Ridley Scott's Prometheus sequel would be a direct continuation of that 2012 picture, and follow Elizabeth Shaw and Android David in the immediate aftermath of Prometheus's events. Scott also went public to state how there would absolutely not be xenomorphs in this follow-up, with him feeling those creatures were old hat by this point. Of course, by the time this sequel made its way to the silver screen under the name of Alien Covenant, the final result was vastly different to what had previously been promised. Yes, there were indeed xenomorphs, because no, they most definitely were not old hat, and there was and is still a fan base for those creatures. While that change of heart from Scott was a welcome one amongst audiences, what was not so welcome was the abysmal treatment of Elizabeth Shaw. Rather than being the main focus of Alien Covenant, Shaw was a complete and utter afterthought, as in the only time we got to even see her in the movie is when her dead, dissected body is briefly glimpsed. Number 9. The Conjuring Put the obvious out there from the get-go, James Wan's The Conjuring is generally viewed as one of the best horror pictures of the past decade. Still, that doesn't mean that the film ultimately varied from what we were initially promised. Ahead of The Conjuring's release, the promotional push and trailers all heavily centered on the Annabelle doll. Heck, the final poster for Wan's 2013 effort was Annabelle looking directly at you while a dark figure sat on a rocking chair. When the movie starts, what we initially get is a look at Annabelle in action, tormenting a couple of trainee nurses as Ed and Lorraine Warren look to assist these traumatized sorts. From there, The Conjuring quickly changes track, with the main focus of the film switched to the Perrin family and the spooky goings-on in their new home. The tale of the Perrins is a fantastic one to watch play out, with family matriarch Carolyn slowly possessed by the nefarious Bathsheba. Yet The Conjuring undoubtedly turned out to be very much not the movie we were expecting it to be, with the Annabelle doll utilized as a subplot. Number 8. Halloween 5 – The Revenge of Michael Myers At the end of Halloween 4 – The Return of Michael Myers, horror hounds were left in shock as Donald Pleasance's Sam Loomis shrieked in terror at seeing young Jamie Lloyd covered in blood after butchering her foster mother with a pair of scissors. By the time Halloween 5 – The Revenge of Michael Myers rolled around, a year later, the belief was that Jamie had gone down the same path as her nefarious uncle, a point hammered home in how the aforementioned murder was carried out, as Jamie was dressed in a similar outfit to what the six-year-old Michael wore when he killed his sister Judith. It looked for all the world, and was originally the plan, that Halloween 5 would see Jamie following in the shape's footsteps, possibly even at his side. By the time the troubled picture was released, things were extremely different to what we'd expected. Expected. Rather than joining Michael, here Jamie was a mute who was being cared for at Haddonfield Children's Clinic. As for the dead foster mom, that element was erased with it explained how she hadn't actually died. Oh, and Danielle Harris's youngster now had telekinetic abilities, which allowed her to communicate with Myers. Number 7. Sweeney Todd, The Demon Barber of Fleet Street A goddamn musical! That was the response of the vast majority of people who flocked to the cinemas to watch Tim Burton's Sweeney Todd, The Demon Barber of Fleet Street back in 2007. Somewhat bizarrely, this Johnny Depp and Helena Bonham Carter headline spin on Sweeney Todd didn't let anyone know it was a musical. Sure, Stephen Sondheim had turned this tale into a full musical stage production in 79, but Burton's movie was positioned as a standard gothic horror affair, rather than a musical gothic horror affair. The trailers for the film promised a stylish, charming horror full of the usual Burton touches, with only one brief semblance of a song uttered by Depp's titular Todd. By playing down the fact that this picture was a musical, Sweeney Todd, the Demon Barber of Fleet Street, received a significant backlash upon release. 
Critics lambasted the movie for how it didn't market itself as a song and dance offering, whilst there were plentiful reports at the time of paying customers walking out of the cinema upon realising exactly what they'd forked out to see. As we mentioned earlier, today's video is brought to you in partnership with Surfshark, who are our favourite VPN providers here at What Culture, because whenever we work together, I get to do fun stuff like this. How to partner no code is, of course, good eye, mate. Anyway, by now you've all probably heard about the benefits of a virtual private network in allowing you to access your favourite website, shows and movies in other countries. But VPNs do so much more than that and allow me to demonstrate that fact with my alter ego, VPN Man. Da -la 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 -la. You kidding me? Da -la 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 -la. Oh no! It's Dastardly Donkey! He runs websites that tailor prices depending on your location and browsing history, and sometimes he charges more if he really thinks you need it. But that's no problem for VPN, man. <gasps> it's Payment Poppy! He runs banks that freeze your account if you try and access it from another country. Not today, Payment Poppy! VPN man's here! Ugh, here's the grumpy giraffe. He's trying to ban Facebook and TikTok because he hates fun. How do you like this from VPN Man? <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, thanks to Surfshark, you can be the master of your own digital destiny across unlimited devices thanks to the incredible offer we've got with them. Simply click the link in the description and enter promo code WHATCULTURE for 83% off and four extra months for free. You can basically become your own VPN man, costume not included. Right, enough of all this, back to the video. Number 6. Resident Evil Apocalypse Paul W.S. Anderson's first Resident Evil movie was drastically different to what had been seen in the Resi video game franchise, but at least Anderson had been sure to make people aware of how his Resident Evil wasn't going to mirror that Resident Evil. Once a sequel was announced in the shape of Resident Evil Apocalypse, we were told the picture would take place in Raccoon City, and would introduce fan favourite characters Jill Valentine and Claire Redfield as a way to be more in tune with the gaming series. Alas, while Raccoon City and Jill were indeed featured, the Claire Redfield character was unfortunately dropped completely for this movie. Instead, Claire, as played by Ali Lata, would later show up in 2007's Resident Evil Extinction. One element that Apocalypse had going for it, though, was the inclusion of Nemesis. That hulking rogue of the third Resi video game had longtime franchise fans excited at seeing this all powerful figure brought to silver screen life. Sadly, rather than get the Nemi we all knew and loved, slash feared, the nemesis of Resident Evil Apocalypse ended up seeing the error of his ways and becoming a hero at the end of the movie, which um, completely sh all over the character. Number 5 Jason Goes to Hell, The Final Friday. Released in 1993, Jason Goes to Hell the Final Friday was the ninth Friday the 13th picture, with Jason Voorhees once more resurfacing to cause all kinds of carnage and chaos in and around Camp Crystal Lake. Well, that's what we were led to believe. Rather inexplicably, the Final Friday blows the shit out of Jason Voorhees in its opening five minutes. Duped into an FBI trap, Jason is ambushed, shot hundreds of times, then exploded in a way which leaves his body in a whole bunch of pieces. With that, audiences have to wait until the final five minutes of the film before seeing the physical form of Jason once more. In the meantime, we get treated to a turd-like parasite being passed from person to person, with said turd being Voorhees' heart, and each new host being possessed by the spirit of Crystal Lake's most infamous Sun. Number 4. Final Destination 5 Quality-wise, the Final Destination franchise is an extremely mixed bag. Still, even in the worst series entries, there are still going to be some great edge-of-your-seat shocks to keep you entertained. In terms of shocks, though, one of the biggest in the five-movie franchise comes at the close of 2011's Final Destination 5. There, our surviving protagonists Sam and Molly decide to embark on a trip to Paris after managing to somehow outmaneuver the Grim Reaper. 
quite magnificently, the penny then drops for the audience that this is the one and the same Flight 180 from the opening act of the original Final Destination. As the first films Carter Horton and Alex Browning are dragged from the plane, the vessel explodes, killing Sam, Molly and all involved, with the revelation that Final Destination 5 had been a prequel movie all along. Prior to this reveal, FD5 was taken as a straight-up sequel that followed the events of the four prior films. Upon a rewatch, the more eagle-eyed viewers can pick up on several easter eggs and nods more related to the year 2000, the year the first movie was released, than the 2011 time when Final Destination 5 was in theaters. Number 3. Alien 3 The production of Alien 3 is infamous for just how damn messed up it all was. For the screenplay alone, William Gibson, Eric Redd, David Toohey, Walter Hill, David Geiler, and Larry Ferguson were all at various stages hired to write this threequel. Likewise, Ridley Scott was approached to direct before Vincent Ward landed that gig. Of course, Ward himself would depart the project to be replaced by David Fincher. One other problem that film had was how the first teaser trailer for the movie stated implicitly how the film would take place on Earth. Xenomorphs heading to Earth was clearly an idea that piqued the interest of those who'd been enamored with the previous two Alien films, and so Alien 3 amassed quite the buzz for itself. As that trailer proclaimed in a booming voiceover fashion, in 1979 we discovered in space no one can hear you scream. In 1992 we will discover on Earth everyone can hear you scream. So when Alien 3 was released and largely took place on the Fury 161 foundry without any utilization of Earth, that was one of several issues that audiences had with the movie. Number 2. It Comes at Night Trey Edward Schultz's 2016 It Comes at Night is a film which you'd think was some sort of zombie picture upon taking a glance at its posters and trailers. With tensions high, the first footage of the movie saw the haunting image of a seemingly zombified woman oozing blood black goo out of her mouth onto some poor fella stuck underneath her. Standard undead infected zombie behavior, right? How It Comes at Night pulls the rug out from those expecting some sort of shuffling undead picture is that so much of the actual horror of the movie is all fabrication. The actual it of the title is more relating to human paranoia and mistrust than any kind of zombie, with the black goo driven scenes all actually dream sequences. As a slow-burning character study, It Comes at Night works effectively and hits the right beats for such a movie. It's just a shame that the film suggests it's going to be something totally different from what it actually is, which played a large part in some of the poor audience response to the movie. Number 1. Scream Hitting cinemas in 1996, Scream completely changed the game when it comes to slasher movies and the larger world of horror, period. Craven masterfully managed to poke fun at the tired tropes of the genre, whilst also delivering a film full of genuine terror. How did Scream turn out differently to what audiences expected? Why that's in how it made the genius call to kill off Drew Barrymore in less than 15 minutes. At that point in time, Barrymore was handily the biggest name involved in Scream, and her face was the one leading the charge in any and all promotional material for the film. Billed as being the traditional final girl of this 96 picture, it was taken for granted that Drew's Casey Becker would make it through to the end of the movie. Instead, Casey is brutally slaughtered in Scream's hugely impactful opening sequence, with Nev Campbell's Sidney Prescott instead the lead character of the movie and the greater Scream franchise. And that is our list. Let me know down in that comment section if you can think of any other horror movies that turned out nothing like you were expecting. As always, I've been Jess from Watch culture thank you so much for hanging out with me if you like you can come say hi to me on my twitter account where i'm at jess mcdonald but make sure you stay tuned to us here for plenty more horror goodness